and the pesto needles. And I keep passing that around too. Now, after they, and this is only so in one place, and it doesn't look less like they can just take it. Yeah, I think they did. I'm pretty sure on this side. But after they had them sewed, and in a big mat, there would be several sold, but they would do something like metal fibers for that. And then they put a braid in the end. There you are. I'm also passing around, this is cherry bark. This is the kind of material. The women, women would have, uh, why don't we stick that in here? The women would collect this material in the summertime when it falls, but the basket makes it easier than the women. This is a spoon, and it's probably made out of uh, maple or alder. Maybe the alders use cedars. And uh, this would be a, probably an everyday festive spoons were often made out of corn, uh, mountain corn or mountain sheep corn, especially farther to the north than uh, Puget Sound. And this is a woodworking tool that would be used on cedar. Um, this is a reproduction, but it is um, made probably of cedar with a stone blade. Now, as I said, when they got exposure to metal, they were not the least bit shy about adapting. So nowadays, uh, an ad would have a metal blade in here. But these were pretty hard, and they, they worked pretty well. So I had to sharpen them more often with a metal blade. And then it's bound with thinner stuff. And they were used this way. The Indians always <laughs> did their woodworking for them, or almost always. And we're always taught to do it the other way. But the Indians did it this way. This is a finishing tool. You want to put that around? Um, long strips of cedar bark into the wool to give it 
spindle and a whorl. It's a spindle. People run like this, and uh, evidently there are different ways to do it. It's not easy as far as I'm concerned. But they would take the wool, which had been roughly carded and cleaned, and they would take the roving and rub it on their hips to get the beginning of a line of you know, uh, spinning material. And then it usually went up over something.
I'm sure glad that you're here today because in this entire week has been a week dedicated and devoted uh, to you as well as your parents uh, to allow you to understand a little bit better what the meaning of trees are and the purpose for planting uh, trees in an in urban environment. And sometime today there's going to be a walk in the Arboretum and when you complete that walk you're going to be given one of these two seedlings. This is a uh, vine maple. It's a vine maple tree. And once you plant this, it'll grow into a, uh, a shrub or a, a, uh, what we call a multi-stem shrub. This will be about 20 feet tall, but it has nice, brilliant fall coloring on it, red and orange fall coloring. And if you plant this, is best planted in a shade. Or you can also take what we call the shore pine seedling. This is a small pine which was met and selected Actually, you can plant it in a backyard. In fact, both of these trees were selected to plant one of them in the backyard so they don't get very big and so that they can actually um, work well in the backyard landscape setting. In addition to that, the engineering department would like to give you this poster. This is a poster which we have developed from one of our street tree programs where you can hang it up in your room and continually remind you of our urban forest, our urban street tree program. So we want to encourage you to take one of these before you leave today as well as one of the seedlings. Now if I could encourage you just to spend a few more moments with us in this area, I've asked Council Member Dolores Bonga to read a proclamation by the mayor that says that the mayor has set aside this week, officially this week, for the city of Seattle to um, on our street trees. And if I can just have you turn around, we're going to have uh, Councilmember Dolores Devon go over the microphone. And so if you could just turn around, we want her to read our proclamation, if you would. Okay. Money 
for the planting of trees. So I hope you will all take advantage of this most wonderful Arbor Fest 1989 and add to the greeting of our great city of Seattle. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dolores. And now you're on the agenda or on the program for today is a field trip, a tour, and Linda Ransley, I'm not sure where she is, for the Arboretum will be conducting that tour. Thank you very much and enjoy your day. And don't forget that we have those seedlings, the uh, short pine, as well as the vine maple, as well as the poster. And also for you parents, if you'd like to stop by and, and take a look at our ma uh, manual or brochure, which we've developed for you, so that you understand what our street tree program is all about, you understand that uh, the importance of properly maintaining the trees, that's all in the uh, brochure that's right here in this flyer, which you see, or in this manual, which you see, which says Urban Trees, the Green of Seattle. Thank you again, and have a very good day. I might also indicate to you that we have a green brochure, which is in our, our entire week activities of Arbor Fest 89. This is really a joint program uh, sponsored by the Seattle Engineering Department, as well as a program sponsored by the Center for Urban Horticulture at the University of Washington. We encourage you to be a part of as much of the festivities as you can because if they are designed, these programs are designed to allow you to understand and to, uh, to understand the proper maintenance and care of trees as well as, as an opportunity for you to see some of the most significant trees planted throughout Seattle, some of the largest specimen trees. So we have tours as well as programs throughout the entire week activities. Thank you again.